What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our Big Ten Football Channel. Michigan hosts Iowa this week in what I would consider to be the biggest game of the weekend in the Big Ten. A lot on the line in this one, especially for the Wolverines. This is a must-win game for them. They've already lost, had that awful performance against Wisconsin. They cannot afford another loss. They are not going to reach the goals that they had set for this season if they lose this game for Iowa. Maybe not as much pressure, uh, but this could be a huge win for them and a win that could springboard them maybe even into the top 10, and they would then start being considered at least as a college football playoff contender. Here is the game. It is at noon Eastern time. It's on Fox. Of course, Fox now, uh, they, they pick their biggest game of the week for the most part, to be at noon Eastern time. Uh, yeah, Michigan favored by three and a half points in this game. The over-under is 47, so Vegas not expecting this game to be real high scoring, and I tend to agree with that. Uh, you're talking about two solid defenses, uh, but it's really been the offense for Iowa that I think surprised a lot of people this year. The thing with the Hawkeyes, though, is that they haven't really been tested. They haven't played a very tough schedule so far. They did play the game against Iowa State, which on the surface looks like a, a big game, but all of a sudden, Iowa State's lost a couple of games, and we start to wonder, is, is that team really that good? So we find out a lot, a lot about Iowa in this game. Uh, this is, again, I think their first real big test, a test to prove that they are a top 15, top 10 type of team. You see ESPN's matchup predictor. They picked uh, Michigan to win this game 62.1%, so they have them favored by a decent amount. Home field advantage, I think, could be a big factor in this game. Uh, you look at the leaders for each team. Nathan Stanley has been quietly putting up some really good numbers for Iowa this year. Uh, you see he's thrown for almost 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns, but no interceptions. I think that's the big story. Uh, Shea Patterson has thrown a couple of interceptions. He has struggled at times this year. Uh, he is going to have to play well in this game if they're going to have a chance to win it. You take a look at the rushing leaders. Iowa has really a three-headed monster at running back. Three guys averaging over five yards per carry. Uh, so watch for that. And, and all these great receivers from Michigan. And uh, Ronnie Bell's kind of emerged as the guy for them. That was, a, I think, a surprise to most people seeing the numbers that he's been able to put up so far this season uh, when you've got Tariq Black and Nico Collins. Um, and Donovan Peoples-Jones. Some of these guys have been injured at times. So, uh, anyways, that's interesting to note. But uh, now we look at the team stats for each team. Points per game, pretty much the same. Points allowed per game. Uh, Iowa's defense has played better. But, again, I think the Hawkeyes have had a little bit of an easier schedule to this point. Offensively, they've looked way better. You take a look at those numbers, 465 yards per game compared to 392. And it's been a balanced attack for Iowa. Uh, they – Historically, you think about this team as a team that can run the football, ground and pound. They're going to throw it some to their tight ends, but they've been much more balanced this year with Nate Stanley at quarterback. Uh, they're throwing almost 250 yards per game, so that is a, a very good sign, I think, for Iowa, the balance that they've been able to have. Last year, they struggled to run the football. This year, they've got both going, but again, it hasn't been against the greatest competition. We'll see what they can do here on the road against Michigan. Uh, Michigan has not run the football as well as they would like, only 130 yards per game. Uh, yards allowed, you see Iowa's defense has done a better job, but uh, it's pretty close there. Uh, they only give up 77 yards on the ground, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, so statistically, Iowa definitely the better team here, but again, these teams haven't played the same schedule, and I think that's a big reason why uh, these numbers are what they are. Uh, so we go into this game, and again, the pressure is there for Michigan. They have to win this game. Is that pressure going to hurt them, or are they going to come out and, and be tight and, and loose to the football? That's, a, that's something that could definitely happen in this game, and it wouldn't surprise me. So the pressure for Iowa, for Michigan, I should say, could hurt them, or it could help them because they could be laser-focused for this game. They could come out and play uh, the best game they've played all season long. That's a possibility as well. For Iowa, I think they can come in here on the road, underdogs, uh, play loose, and I think they'll have a chance to win this game. Uh, it's it's one that I could really see going either way. I think Iowa, some people maybe underrate this team a little bit. I'm not ready to put them in my top 10 yet, but this is a very good football team. Uh, it's a team that I think is probably right now the second best team in the Big Ten West. I didn't think that coming into this season, but already what we've seen out of them and what they've been able to do offensively, the balance they've had there, I think that's been a big story. For Michigan, it's just been an awful start to the season. It really has. Offensively, they haven't been able to run the football like they normally do, and, and you can look at the roster and understand why. They don't have a lot of experience 
talented guys like they normally do. Shea Patterson has not played very well so far this season. The defense hasn't played great. Uh, they, they're not really forcing a lot of turnovers. That's something that I think they're going to need to do. I think Michigan will need to force a couple of turnovers if they'll have a chance, if they're going to have a chance to win this game. Uh, can they do it? I think they can. I'm going to say that Michigan wins this game. I think it'll be close, but I think their backs are against the wall. I think they have to put on a good performance in this game. They have to play well. Uh, against Wisconsin, it's not just that they lost, but they played awful in that game. I think you're going to see a team that comes out and plays better in this game, and I think it's enough for them if they can force a couple of turnovers, take advantage of that, that home crowd. I think Michigan will find a way to survive. I'm taking Michigan 27, Iowa 20, but again, it's one that I could see going either way. The problems we've seen from Michigan, I still think they're fixable. I don't think it's anything major. Uh, I think they just got to kind of get some rhythm offensively and, and just improve in some areas fundamentally. And if they can do that, this is still a really good football team. But if, if the problems are bigger than I'm, I'm anticipating, they're going to lose this game and they're going to have an awful season. If the team that we saw against Wisconsin and Army, if that's the way they're going to play the rest of the year, this team will not have a good year at all because we know Iowa's a good team. They might not be a great team. They might not be a top 10 team, but we know they're a really good team a solid, sound football team, and it's a team that can beat Michigan if they do not play really well in this game. I think they do come out, though, and play much better, and I, again, I'm going to take Michigan 27-20. to 20. You guys can give me your prediction down in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video, and stay tuned for more here on our Big Ten Football Channel.